Salam alaikum to Allah Hirakatu guys. I'm with Rebecca. Salam alaikum. Uh, we both converted to Islam and our mums both um, have been doing reaction videos for us on YouTube. And I thought it'd be really fun if our mums reacted to the same video together to kind of get that like perspective on what it's like for us as converts, sort of trying to give dawah to our own parents. And um, yeah, I just thought it'd be a fun experiment really, to be honest. Yeah. And alhamdulillah that we have such supportive parents because there's so many reverts out there that their parents kick them out of the house. They just don't accept them becoming Muslim. So alhamdulillah that our mothers are accepting of us being Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah yeah. And uh, I, I think it's going to be a fun experiment. So let's see how it goes. Inshallah. <laughs> Onto the videos. Ramadan begins in Gaza with famine spreading and the death toll nearing 45,000. I'm raising funds for orphans, children with amputated limbs, children that are starving, to supply water, food, medical supplies, just basic necessities for our brothers and sisters in Gaza. The fundraiser is Zakat eligible and every donation, no matter how small or how big, will be greatly appreciated. I partnered with HCI Canada, which are a Muslim charity, and I chose to partner with them because they're endorsed by some of the biggest activists for Palestine, like Sean King and Mu'taz Azaza. And I've actually worked with them a couple of times before and I continue to work with them as my favorite charity because they're very transparent in their work. They keep me up to date with videos and pictures and I completely trust these people with all my heart. They are one of the leading charities on the ground in Gaza. So please, if you have the means to donate, the link is in the description of this video, in the comments of this video. Don't miss out on this chance to get good deeds. Onto the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala abdillahi wa rasulihi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. My beloved brothers and sisters, a very important question Who is your mother? Have you ever thought about it? Your mother is indeed the one who gave birth to you. But more important than that, your mother is the one who was chosen by Allah. Neither did she ask that she have a particular child known as you. Nor did you ask that you have a particular mother known as her. That final detail was chosen by Allah and Allah alone. So bear that in mind. You are a human. You might think you're very intelligent. You've earned a lot. You've achieved a lot. You are powerful. You are different. You are unique. You are amazing. You don't realize part of your challenge and your test that Allah chose for you is that mother of yours. That mother of yours and the father. But primarily the mother because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has told us three times more about the mother than the father when it comes to the kindness and the goodness of companionship and, and so on. He says, Ummuka, Ummuka, Ummuka. I'm sure you know that we probably will come to that hadith just now. But primarily, as man grows older, one of the first people that he takes for granted is his mother. And the mother continues. You see, if I were to take you back prior to the time when you were conceived by your mother and I, the reality is, your mother, your parents were probably, probably in the case of the majority, perhaps making dua to have a child. Many times people, they make dua, oh Allah bless us with a child. And in the case where people have not made a dua, but suddenly they felt they conceived subhanallah. What happened? They then prayed and made dua after that. Oh Allah, make it easy for me. Give me a good child. Bless me with this child, that child and so on. Sometimes because of human error, people make mistakes in the du'as that they make. Do you know what that means? You don't realize by saying, Oh Allah, give me a son. I want a son. I only want a son. I don't want a daughter. I want a son. Oh, I want a daughter. You don't realize that you can say more correctly, Oh Allah, bless me with a son. But no matter what you bless me with, I will be happy. Because there are people out there who neither have boys nor girls. Ask them. They'll tell you boy or girl is besides the point. I want a child. May Allah bless those without children, with children. Amen. So it's amazingly unique because Allah Almighty is the one who responds to that prayer. We believe in him. The mother is excited, but guess what? As soon as she conceives, her health begins to change. 
What happens? Mostly there's negative that comes in. She has morning sickness. She might not feel well. She has to check her pressure. She has to worry about her heartburn at some point. She has to be concerned about her sleep at a point. And what are you doing? You are comfy, relaxed, beautiful, floating in beautifully conditioned liquid that is absolutely superb. Your environment is unique and you're busy going around and at 120 days you start kicking as well. Subhanallah, the soul is blown. Here is your mother. The heavier you're becoming, the happier she's becoming. The more burdensome you're becoming, the more excited she is about receiving you. Subhanallah, that's the first person you take for granted. And I know from amongst us... How does he know all unreasonable. this? <laughs> totally unreasonable. But how do you treat her? That's the question. She can be unreasonable. Are you unreasonable? You might want to distance from some toxic mothers, which happens at times, but to what limit? To what extent? Will you still consider her a person whom paradise will be achieved through her service? Many people say, no, my mother's really, really so bad, so terrible. I don't want to have anything to do with her. It depends. Obviously, I'm speaking generally. It depends what she's done. And another thing, even if she's done something bad, you need to ask Allah Almighty to guide her, to grant her goodness. That's the minimum care. When you see a drunkard on the street, when you see a person who's done something really bad, your concern should be such that you reach out to them with a good dua. You see a person who swore at you, instead of swearing them back, you can pray for them. You can ask Allah to guide them. Tomorrow their hearts will be softened. And if it was your dua that softened the heart, Wallahi, you've contributed towards empowering community and society towards the correct development. Subhanallah. Look at community. Why? We're all good people, happy, smiling at each other, and we're all okay, assisting one another, reaching out to one another, because we care for one another as an ummah. It doesn't mean that if you make one mistake or a big mistake, that people should knock you out completely. One of the disasters we are facing in many societies is those who have served time in correctional services, or what is known as prisons in other less fancy countries. I can tell you, they come out and they are not fitting in society and community because people excommunicate them, not realizing, but this was just a person who served some time, correctional services, they corrected themselves, they were in prison for a while. Now that they are out, give them a chance. Give them a chance, a careful chance, but that chance needs to be given. When I say a careful chance, I mean you watch, you see. If you notice that there's no change, yes, you are right in perhaps trying to minimize some contact, some relation to a degree. But you cannot suddenly say, no, I don't want to have anything to do with this person. They could be anyone. It could be you tomorrow. You might have been accused wrongly of something, spent time in prison. Does that mean it's the end of the world for you? Similarly, what happens, my beloved brothers and sisters, is within ourselves, if our parents have done something wrong in life, it's not the end of the world. I do know and I will make an exception when it comes to a father or a mother, mostly fathers. Well, when I say mostly, I mean, it's very rare, but it does happen from among those who do it. It's mostly fathers, fathers who have abused their daughters or their children, sometimes to sexual abuse in that particular case. Yes, we deal with it differently. I cannot come and tell you, no, you know what, relax, take it easy. It's okay. That's your father. We have to protect you, my beloved child, more than anyone else. This adult abused his status as a father. So in that case, I'm just showing you there is an exception. But when it comes to the fact that they might be harsh, they might be strict, they might not like much that, that you do and so on. They might be picking on everything you say or do. That doesn't make them evil people. That's your father. Generally, he would like to see you succeed. Some of them are different. Subhanallah. Different in the sense that the way they deal with you is different from what you might have learned at school. Oh, your fathers should play with you and spend time with you and communicate with you and gel with you and go out with you and take you here and there. Some fathers are so busy trying to earn a living so that you can eat and they don't have time for all of that. And then you hold that against them. And if they were to come for that, they wouldn't have had something for you to eat. So which one do you want? It's difficult. Excuse them. Alhamdulillah. You might want to communicate. And communication is important no matter who you are. You can be a father or a child. Communication is absolutely important. 
But your mother, your mother is someone chosen by Allah as a test for you. And my beloved mothers, your child is someone whom Allah has chosen as a test for you. And she has you tested me. <laughs> that right there is emotional damage. The children, respect your mother. Minimum, respect them. Make dua for them. Ask Allah to soften their hearts, to keep them healthy. Ask Allah to bless them. Because Allah created you. That's why you are here today. And Allah chose the channel through which he created you. And that's your mother. Allah has created a natural love within the heart of a mother for a child. One day when the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was passing by, a lady who was breastfeeding her child, the Prophet peace be upon him says, do you ever think this woman would throw this particular child in the fire? And they said, no. So he says, well, the, the Allah Almighty is 70 times more merciful upon us than this woman is upon that particular child or is more merciful upon us than this particular child. So do you really, th this mother towards the child, do you really think that Allah is going to cast you and I to hellfire? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. So my brothers and sisters, the Prophet peace be upon him has told us a lot about mothers. I want to say to all of us today, no matter who you are and how old you are, you are still the baby of your mother for as long as she's alive. No matter how gray your beard may be, your mother's alive. She has the right to call you baby. Nowadays, the wife calls you baby, baby, what baby? You're actually your mother's baby. People say he's a mommy's baby. Well, who do you think gave birth to me? Who do you think gave birth to me? Subhanallah, it's my mother. That having been said, as you grow older, Subhanallah, mothers complain always. And they say, you know, my son or my daughter, they shout back at me. They swear at me. They are rude to me. They don't care for me. I tell you, nearly everyone I have seen in my life who has succeeded in worldly matters and even religiously, they have a very close connection with their mothers. Trust me, go and pick up the wealthiest of the wealthy. And when I say wealthiest of wealthy, I'm not just talking of rich in terms of money, but they have contentment with it. You see, that's what it is. Some people have a lot of money, but no contentment. I'm talking of those who have the wealth and the contentment and the connection with Allah. They have a relationship with their mothers. I promise you, come what may. You have politics between your wife and your mother, but you know how to navigate it. That's my mother. That's my wife. I will give her her rights. I'll keep her separately. I'll do whatever. But my mother, I will honor her. I will pray for her. I will call her. I will find out how she's doing. What do they want at a later stage in their lives? Nothing besides you just showing concern. Nothing more than that. Go and spend time with her a day, meaning in the day, a few, an hour or so. Phone her, call her, find out how she's doing. That's all. How was your day? Even if you don't want to listen to it, pretend like you want to listen to it and you'll be fulfilling something good. Subhanallah. They become lonely, but they gave birth to you. Imagine you held someone nine months and then they ignore you for the next of the 90 years. Subhanallah. They ignore you. How? Not only holding you nine months when you were born, she struggled and suffered. Many women go through what is known as postnatal depression. Many of them, they struggle because on one hand they need sleep, which they're not getting. Because why? You're yelling and you're crying. Another thing is perhaps they had to feed you and ensure that your food was being digested in a proper way and make sure that when you were crying, you were dealt with immediately. That's what they spent their few days or months or years doing and then what do we do we grow older and just because of a small thing she tells you no i don't want and then you say you know that witch how can you call your own mother a witch are you okay well what does it make you a wizard i guess <laughs> may allah forgive us you can't do that you have to watch your mouth because you pay for the words you utter to random people what do you think you're going to pay for the words you utter to your own mother go and seek forgiveness mom I'm sorry. I treated you badly. I spoke to you badly. I apologize. Please forgive me. You are my mother. I know you will forgive me. And there she is smiling, thinking, I knew you would come back. What did you think about it? Is it about mothers and like the mother's state? What do you think? All I can say is he must have hated you the day he picked me and your father. <laughs> Why? Oh, you got a rum old pair, didn't you? <laughs> no, don't say that. Why do you say that? Well, where's your dad in all this? I mean, yeah, well, he's not exactly the best, but... You're amazing. You've always been there for me. Because that's what he was talking about, how our prophet... Yeah, how does he know? 
about all this pregnancy lark and how this, that and the other. He's never been pregnant, has he? <laughs> but in our religion, we, we put the mum three times first before the dad because of what the prophet told us. Who's the most important person in your life? Your mum. And then they asked him again. He said, your mum. They asked him again. said, your mum. And they asked him again. Then, then your dad. So it goes mum, 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 dad. <laughs> like him. Well, so without your mum, you wouldn't be here. Uh... To stress the importance of your own. Mm. And that's kind of what the video is about. Mm. Yes. I'm very important. <laughs> very, important on, lady. very important person. <laughs> it's a very important lady. Virginia. I'm a very important lady with a very long stick that I can poke you with. <laughs> and I'm a very important lady to you because I'm your granny. Yes. Are you crying? Am I crying? No, I'm not crying. You're crying. Um, yeah, that people shout at their mothers and that their mothers shout back at them. That shocked you? Yes, I know people do it, but... Oh, sorry, I've got itchy eye now. I am dying with a cold that my daughter gave me. Because <laughs> she's so kind to her mother, she felt that I needed to have her cold. <laughs> and now I've got an itchy eye, sorry. Um, yeah, so you would never shout at your mum, would you? It's very disrespectful. No, I wouldn't mom. shout at my mum. Never ever <laughs> shouted at my mum. Oh, I've gone after, I've gone out left and cursed and sweared her and gone, for God's sake, why did she do that? But I never would have shouted at her to her face. But you curse and swear in private, it's just venting, it's not meaning it. What do you think of the speaker? Well, oh, typical professional speaker, isn't it? Convincing. Yeah. Which is what professional speakers do, isn't it? There's no point in being a professional speaker if you're not convincing about what you're talking about. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed him. He's very, so good, isn't he? So yeah. entertaining and so um, um, positive about, you know, about Islam, isn't he? Yeah. He really is. Yeah. But, and, and I do particularly love the fact that, not just because I'm a female, but I like, I love the fact that in Islam, it's the mother three times and then the father. Yeah. When we watched the last video, I, you know, that's when I first heard that. And I thought, that's true, because it is. There's no bigger person in your life than your mother, yeah. you know? When he was uh, speaking about, you know, um, you, you can't choose who your mother's going to be and your mother, you, you can't choose what your baby's going to be. You're just given that by Allah so yeah. you he's been cho he chose you as as you know as I've told you many times Rebecca that I was choosing not to have children because I didn't think I'd be very good at it and well, you're uh, very wrong well oh, thank <laughs> you <laughs> but I just thought I wouldn't be very good at it as I'd always been a kind of shy person I just didn't think I'd be good at it Obviously, was chosen, wasn't I? Yeah, I was obviously chosen because it was it was just an accident. Yeah, eh? well, like Mifty Mike said there, that there's parents that are making dua to have a child, mm -hmm. and then there's parents that are blessed with a child, but they never actually made that prayer in the first place. Yeah. So that was like you. Uh -huh. Allah obviously chose you to have. I know. A girl and a boy because he thought that was the best plan for you, and we have a saying that. We plan, but Allah is best of planners. Yes. So you had a plan for yourself to never be a mother, and yet uh -huh. he had a greater plan for you. I know, it's incredible, isn't it? It's the best job I've ever had. Aww. And the best, and the, and the, just the best job ever. And if I hadn't have had that mistake, which I was thinking it was a mistake, yeah. I would have never known what this would be like and would I grow would have grown up now to be this age and look back and think I've missed out that or would I have not have known yeah. who knows but it didn't matter because I've had two now haven't I and yeah. I just it's the like I say it's the best job I've ever had it's the hardest job I've ever had as well but in in a good way because it's a, it's a hard job if you do it at your best and I recommend to anybody who's got any doubts about having a baby just pray and hope that you're lucky and you do have I loved on the video as well 
when he spoke about your mother, you know, has to suffer all the sickness and and being uncomfortable and, you know, and your whole body is put under pressure, you know, yeah. and your whole body as well as a, as a mother giving birth. Once you've, before you have that, you've, you, before you become pregnant, your body is is young and fit and healthy. And by the time you've come to the end and have had your baby, it's not the same again, you know? Which is you know, not something I'm wanting to put you up, but it's a sacrifice yeah. that your mother... And that's why the mother is, is three times the father. I like the way he said that... When you're just floating around as the baby, yeah. you're floating around this lovely liquid, having a nice time, and the mother's oh, you know, and sore and going through sickness, which just makes you sick. Just we having a warning, and you start vomiting. It's just, you know, but it, I just thought that's that was so that was funny and but true. I've always I've always thought this. You know, and it's your birthday, and everybody's celebrating. Oh, it's your birthday, da da da, and you think, you know, I was, it's not. I did nothing. I've always, I swear to God, I've always thought that. I did nothing. I was just that day is my birthday. It's not. I haven't done anything to make it that special, yeah. and that's why when you it's your birthday i just enjoy that because i see it as a celebration for me because yeah. i always do it's, it's funny that you have yeah. that point of view because in islam you're not actually supposed to celebrate birthdays yes yeah, so and yeah. yet you already have that view about birthdays so I that's know. really interesting and like how many times have i if i if i'm working and it's on. It's a work day, and it's my birthday. So what? He did cover just slightly about the unusual situations that if you did had a terrible mother or a father that was an abuser, or yeah. you know, and that is true. It does happen. It is, yeah. it does happen. Actually, there is a you know? lot of revert Muslims that their parents just don't accept them becoming yeah. Muslim and kick them out of the house. So it's dreadful. It is. It's really, really sad. Really it's sad. Dreadful. In them situations, it's it's really difficult, isn't it? See, I I would well, I would never even think of anything like that. But I gave birth to you, so I brought you into the world. So if anything was not to be the norm, like people, you know, I would have never blamed on you or pushed you away. I'd have always said, well, I gave birth to to her I never push you away so you've watched quite a few Islamic videos now mm -hmm. and what are your thoughts on the treatment of mothers especially in Islam no I think it's I think it's wonderful because the mother's protected a lot of Islamophobes like to you know trash talk Islam and say that women are oppressed and they're just treated terribly but I think you're seeing the real side to it yeah. by watching these videos. I, I haven't, I'd never, I'd never really believed in all that. You know, mixed with many people with with work and, and, and stuff like that. I've never, ever really listened too much about all of that. I think that um, you are, you know, you're well looked after. You know, the wife yeah. or the mother... Uh, are looked after and protected, uh, if anything, yeah. So, yeah. and it was just really a wee bit like old-fashioned Britain years ago, you know. And I think it is is lovely, and that's the way it should be. So, firstly, um, how did your mum react to the video? Well, that's the second Mufti Mank video that my mum's watched. The first one was the treatment of parents in Islam, and she really took so much from that video. So even now she'll keep saying, you know, your mother three times before your father. And yeah, she really enjoys watching videos by him. <laughs> um, I think because he comes across, you know, he's so well-spoken and he's, you know, he's nice and soft. He's not so harsh. So yeah, she really does enjoy watching the videos by him. Yeah. So that's interesting because my mum finds like the way he looks actually, like she doesn't like it. Like, because really? you know, he wears like the full like phobe yeah. and everything she like for her is all very strange and she okay. like she doesn't like the way he dresses and stuff like that she just finds it very weird and I think because of the way he dresses like she can't look past that 
even yeah, though he is like, nice and well spoken yeah. I think because he dresses like that she's just like that's really strange for her she oh. finds it really weird <laughs> so your mum like doesn't find it weird well my mum has traveled quite a lot so yeah I don't really think that she finds me anything strange to be honest she's really quite open-minded okay has she been to like a Muslim country um yeah well we went to Turkey um okay. it was actually before I became Muslim we went there my mum had more of an interest in Islam than I did she went inside oh, wow. a mosque yeah um when she would go out for walks and stuff she would hear the call to prayer and she just loved it so she had oh. an interest before I did alhamdulillah yeah <laughs> okay see my mum hasn't like traveled at all um and she definitely hasn't been to a muslim country yeah so when you first became muslim how did she react to that then i don't think she was too shocked um because i'd been married for two years before that to a muslim man so i kind of think she saw it coming i stopped drinking alcohol stopped eating pork and it was kind of a gradual process so she wasn't too shocked but she's just been so happy about it because i'm so much of a calmer person she doesn't worry about me anymore and yeah i mean i treat her better as well so yeah she's she's happy i became muslim yeah i think my mom has like a very similar thing where she she will never really sort of say it but if she ever sees me slipping in any way she will sort of say to me like hmm like she'll correct me in the religion yeah. which is weird, she's not Muslim. but I think she likes she likes it when I'm spiritually connected because I'm a better person yeah. she notices when I'm not spiritually connected and she does sort of like try and enforce that on me because she wants me to be a good person obviously yeah that's lovely you know that reminds me of my mom anytime she'll hear the adan go off my phone she's like right go pray go on go now <laughs> yeah I think if I didn't pray for an entire day which I haven't done but I think if I did that I think she would probably like be very scared yeah I think she would like come to me and be like what's going on you need to talk yeah. to me you haven't prayed alhamdulillah we have such supportive mothers Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I think that's kind of a sign that people don't really tell you about it because even though she's not particularly happy about my Islam, like sometimes she doesn't like the fact that I wear hijab in the streets and things like that. Um, but she does kind of still keep me in check as a Muslim, which is kind of like yeah. weird. And sometimes like I'll be praying and she'll be saying something and obviously I'm praying so I don't respond. And then I'll hear her go like, oh, sorry, you're praying. Yeah, my mum does that yeah. too. <laughs> Which is, I think is really, really cute. <laughs> I guess yeah. when, like wearing the hijab out in the street, it's a bit of a safety worry sometimes, you know? So that's probably what it's to do with. Yeah, and I think like her friends find it very strange. I think it's kind of embarrassing for her a little bit. Right. Um, yeah. But I wear a hijab and I'm visibly Muslim because like her friends don't really like it right okay <clears throat> yeah but overall like I haven't shown her a video like this before so I was kind of shocked at her response and she actually reacted quite well to it so what does she think about it so she was she was a bit like weirded out by the way Mufti Meng looks because she doesn't like it um but then she was really sort of <coughs> she was really um she was really happy about what he was saying and she hadn't heard any of the stuff about parents in islam before i'd never thought to show it to her i mean it's a really good idea yeah um and yeah i mean she really liked that kind of emphasis on looking after your parents because my mum my mum's main concern is she always says this to me is don't put me in a care home like she always I'm like mum like it's literally like not in our religion to do something like that she's yeah. like please don't put me in a care home I'm like it's not in our religion don't worry and yeah. I think this kind of stuff like helps her like get over those fears yeah yeah no that's really good I think yeah it's quite a shock isn't it the emphasis of parents especially mothers in Islam for people that don't know much about Islam, it is, it's not something that you would expect, I don't think. No. 
definitely not. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, it was. Um, I'm glad we did it. It was a super fun experiment. Yeah. And, um, our mums are a little bit like twins in a way as well, so I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but alhamdulillah awesome alhamdulillah. yeah <laughs> well thank you guys for watching assalamu alaikum